We're on. Welcome back to the Art and Business of Writing podcast, where we help writers write efficiently and market effectively. I'm Kayla Thomas, and I'm here with my co-host, Chris Jones. Hey, Chris, how are you doing this week? Hey, Kayla, I am doing well. I'm trying to dig out. You know, last week I talked about digging out from snow. This week I'm talking about digging out from deadlines. <laughs> I have been writing like a madman this week. I've had so many stories that are either due or need to be done and ready to go in the next week. So I have been scribing away. How about you? Well, uh, for once in my life, I am not buried under things. That's kind of nice. I'm just doing some working ahead on... Um, the book I'm writing, it's probably not as exciting to hear my reports every week because when I'm in draft mode, that's pretty much the report every week as I'm just riding along where you kind of mix things up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just uh, it's the way it goes. But the cool thing about what you do, though, is you get a chance to research cool things because you had talked about last time you and I had chatted about doing some research on football. How'd that go? It went really well, and actually, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I got to go on a research field trip last Friday. I have a friend who is an athletic trainer for the local high school, and so she invited me up and took me on a tour of her athletic training room, and it was so fun to go and see what all the equipment looked like and what it does, and I watched her do a couple little treatments on students, and I also got to talk to her um, she has an intern right now too so between the two of them they overloaded me with information and, and they are so passionate about what they do it was just such a blast and so now the athletic trainer character in my book is going to come alive in a very realistic way because I really understand what she does it was a great opportunity it's funny to see how research impacts writing like makes writing more realistic it really brings things to life it does. It does. And it inspires me and makes you want to just sit down and, and go to work. So, yeah, I mean, I, I tell people that don't be a writer if you don't like homework because we are constantly giving ourselves homework. <laughs> oh, yes. Nonstop. Well, let's talk about what we're going to do today. Today, we're going to talk about marketing your book like a pro. But before we get into the specifics, let's have a word from our sponsor. Hey, writers. Do you struggle to create a strong writing habit? Let me tell you about an easy to use spreadsheet hundreds of writers have come to depend on. With the writing and revision tracker, you simply enter the amount of words you've written or pages you've revised at the end of each day and it will automatically calculate your daily, weekly, monthly, and annual totals for up to 8 projects. Set monthly goals and watch the colorful graphs grow. To find out more or download your copy, visit Jamie Raintree, that's J-A-M-I-E, R-A-I-N-T-R-E-E dot -E com. We're back. We know how much work you put in to get your book written and published. And whether you're traditionally or self-published, you're going to have to do some marketing to make sure your work reaches the widest possible audience. Chris and I have assembled a list of ideas that we've personally tried and will share with you their level of success for each of us. We want to get your wheels turning on options that might be a good fit for your marketing plan. As we go along, we'll also share what kind of marketing ideas we are planning for our work in 2017. Does that sound good, Chris? Are you ready to get started? Dude, I am pumped to talk about marketing. Awesome. Yes, this is totally in your wheelhouse. In fact, this episode was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love the business side of writing. I mean, because there's so many good writers and people write well, but the marketing part is what really gets writers to clam up and they get nervous. So this is a great opportunity for them to jump in, listen, and apply some really easy and fun marketing tips to hit the ground running, like you said. Yes, exactly. It can be intimidating. So that's why I'm making the caveat of saying don't try to do everything at once. Just pick one thing and see how it goes for you to start out with. So we're going to start with Facebook ads. Um, this is something I've been working on for the last mm, year or so. I've been playing with them off and on. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Facebook has become kind of a pay-to-play environment. Not everyone is going to see what you post on your business Facebook page. You, um, Facebook has algorithms and things, so just because you posted it there and somebody likes your page doesn't mean that they're gonna see your post. So to ensure that you're reaching a wide audience, um, doing a Facebook ad is your next best bet. 
So um, what I've done for Facebook ads is I've done used them when I have a book on sale or if I have a book that I'm giving away over on Amazon. And I'm getting better at it. With each ad, I'm getting better at it. I listen to podcasts that talk about it. I mean, there's so many buttons to push and things to click that um, learning how to target your market is, or your audience is really the key. And it takes a lot of practice. And some people throw hundreds of dollars at it. And I don't have that kind of money. I've just been kind of going slowly along. But if, for example, if you, I'll, I'll use my latest one, for example, my, um, I was creating a lead magnet for my email list and I was giving away the first series in my gen or first book in my Jenna Ray series and they're kind of a silly fun chiclic read and so I realized that she was kind of similar those books were kind of similar in tone to what Janet Ivanovich writes so I targeted people who like Janet Ivanovich and so that was easier that's probably my most successful Facebook ad to date and it was great for building my email list and it sent people to my website. So, you know, just learning little tricks like that is really helpful with Facebook, but just remember there's still a lot of trial and error and I personally am still refining. How about you, Chris? Do you use Facebook ads? I have done Facebook ads in the past uh, and I, to varying degrees of success. Uh, I find that Facebook ads, the best part about a Facebook ad is that it has that integration to Instagram uh, because Facebook owns Instagram. So uh, when you're using your Facebook ads, they will show up on Instagram. And the way you do that is you have to use Facebook's power editor. You have to set up the Instagram through Facebook's power editor. So you just type, you know, if you want to Google search it, just Google search, you know, Facebook Power Editor, and you'll get an interface, and it'll help you set up your Facebook ad, and it'll help you set up your Instagram side. And so what it does is they, they run simultaneously. So if you've got a, a growing audience on Instagram, they'll see the ad that you have for Facebook and be able to click through. Um, when I did, uh, when I first started selling my book, I did a free version towards the end, and I tried some Facebook ads, and I didn't, uh, I didn't have any degree of success with it but I know a lot of people who have had lots of degrees of success and maybe it's because it's one of those things like you said it's all trial and error it's either how much you spend or it's based on who you target or how much you're targeting these people so my experience is a little bit different but I'm not afraid to try it again I'm not afraid to invest more money into Facebook because I still think that Facebook uh, offers prime real estate in the social market world. Oh, for sure. I will definitely be doing more Facebook ads this spring as I put out my new book. That's definitely on in my toolbox for marketing. Yeah. Um, and what I've heard, and, and something and something I have heard that is successful with Facebook uh, on the advertising side is the video. I have heard a lot of great things about people who have used video as their sponsored me content. Me too. And I haven't played with it too much. I think I did one silly little video on my page, but that was... You know, I wasn't really marketing anything. I was just trying it out to see if anybody was listening. <laughs> <laughs> Back to me pushing buttons and seeing what happens. But yeah, I think if you have a plan for it, I, I think it can be pretty successful. Now, when you set your Facebook ads, how did you set them uh, to be successful? What, like, what were some of the the things that you played with, or some of the settings that you tried? The biggest change that I did this last time was realizing you could there's some drop down boxes and you can um, do searches for people who like Janet Ivanovich for example like I was talking about earlier and so I use them as kind of a target market so I clicked that and so basically it shows up in their feed going if you like Stephanie Plum you know you will like Jenna Ray sort of a deal and grab their attention and then narrowing down um so many, they have kind of a neat little, uh, I don't know, a barometer on the side that will show you how broad your selections are. And you want to narrow that down quite a bit. Otherwise, it's one of those things is you can't speak to everybody or you're speaking to nobody. And so you want to watch that barometer as you make your choices. But choosing things like readers of chiclet, romance readers, um, People who, if you're doing a giveaway for an ebook, for example, you would look um, narrow it down to people who enjoy reading on Kindle or people who enjoy reading ebooks, that kind of thing. Does does that help answer your question? 
Yeah, yeah, because I think for people who are listening, it's, it adds a lot of value because like you said, yeah, if you're targeting everybody, you get nobody. So being able to think about uh, comparing your book to like authors and people who like a certain genre is a big helpful tip. Yeah, exactly. Where your book would be more, you know, targeting um, people who are learning to set up their writing business and things like that. It would be a completely different market than what I would be going after. Right. Exactly. All right, so after Facebook ads, we have email lists. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard people talk about the email lists, every podcast, every blog, everyone talks about them, but there's a reason. It's because they are so important. The people on your email list are your go-to people. They're ready and waiting when you have new work and they are always good to give you a bump in sales, especially at the beginning, which um, the further you get into the writing world, you'll discover that boosts you up in the Amazon rankings and giving you more exposure. It's kind of a big cycle. So building your email list is crucial and I have been working on it since fall of 2014 and it's been a very slow process. Um, I've discovered that having an enticing giveaway is probably the best way to grow your list and I am slow to have taken that advice from people. I didn't feel like I had something I could give away and it just took me getting brave and, and just trying some things. So like right now, my giveaway is the first novella in my Jenna Ray series and people sign up for the email list and boom, that book is delivered to them a little tip is i recommend using book funnel to do that so that way people don't have so many issues side loading the ebook that you just sent them other people um like chris you probably would recommend having some sort of a what like a checklist or something like that to help people in their business for if you weren't doing fiction well, what I've done with mine on my website is I've got the first chapter. So if you want to look at the ch a chapter of my book, you can pull it on down and check out the entire first chapter. And if the first chapter entices you, then you can buy the entire book. But yeah, I think in my space, the nonfiction space, you have a lot of people who do the checklists or they do the, the small ebooks or other lead magnets. And I feel like the mechanic sometimes, you know, the mechanic never has time to work on his own car. But it's time yeah. to fix everyone else's car. And so I spent a lot of my time helping everyone else build their lead magnets. But I still don't have a, a really great working lead magnet. But I do like that I have, I've got something there for people to come and grab. My email list serves me primarily to broadcast information. Like I said, because I am nonfiction, information is my commodity. So I use it to share about my podcast or if I've got a new blog update or if I'm working on something, if I'm starting a new book or whatever the case may be, then I can use my email list to let right, let my readers know that something new is coming down the pike. So it's a great way for me to use it as a more of a PR broadcast channel. I use mine as that and just kind of a connection thing. You know, I always let them know I, I let my email list know actually before anybody else when a book has gone live so they have a little bit of time not that it sells out but it's fun to know before everybody else that something cool has happened um, I use it to let them know when I'm going to be having live events so they can put that on their calendar and um, most recently in the last couple of weeks I was realizing that I really wanted to engage with them more and get to know them more and I'm having, I was having some trouble naming my new series. So I sent out an email to my list and said, can you guys help me? I know a lot of you guys have read the first book in the series. I gave them a little snapshot of what the second book was going to be about and introduced them to one of the new characters and said, email me, talk to me. What do you think? What do you want to see? What do you want to hear? And I have had such a brilliant response and it's been so fun. I mean, it's not just people I know, it's people I have never met before and they have had such creative ideas and I respond to each one of them personally and it has been so fun for connecting one-on-one -on -one with my readers. Wow, that's fantastic. That is fantastic. Now, that's a really cool idea, using it to get readers engaged in helping name a product that they're probably gonna read at some point. I like that. Yeah, I think they'll be more excited to read it, you know, when the time yeah. comes. and. When I fully nail down the title of the book and the series, I will send another email out saying, guess what, here's the name, and I'll probably correspond it with the cover release so they can see what it looks like on the cover. And if it's okay with the person or people who gave me the suggestions, I'm gonna name them and thank them personally for helping me come up with it. So 
Um, I'm pretty tickled about what just went down in the last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear it in your voice. I can totally hear it in your voice. <laughs> You know, and the, the challenge you know, with email is building that list. Like you said, it's an exercise in patience. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a mm-hmm. lot of time and a lot of patience, a lot of networking, a lot of connecting with people. But it's like you said also, it, you have to give people something in exchange for that email address. Don't go and just arbitrarily just put people's email uh, addresses into your email list they don't like that very much so make sure that no. you know you give them <laughs> make sure that you give them some value in exchange for that email address so whether it's a chapter of a book whether it's an entire book in a series which is really cool that you're doing that whether it's some other value added proposition think about ways that you can entice people to join your email list you can't go and wrong you, there. and you talked and you, and you talked about book funnel can you just briefly and quickly talk about really how that works Oh, sure. Yeah. So I just learned about BookFunnel this fall. I think it's a relatively new thing. And again, I'm not affiliated with BookFunnel in any way. It's just a a service I really enjoy. What they do is you can upload your book that you want to give away to their website. And I think there's different levels of things you can do but I it's really inexpensive for $20 a year I'm pretty sure that's what I signed up for $20 a year you can have you can give away 500 books per month ebooks which is quite a few at least at my age and stage of the game you know if you are having a massive following and you think thousands are gonna go out you would buy a bigger package but for me this is perfect and you um, then set that up into your um, autoresponder series there will be a link to the book funnel site with your book and they will walk the people through step by step do you want to read this on your kindle or your ipad or um in an ibook format or so all the different possible formats they have the option and then you click the one you want and then they walk the the person through how to download it onto their device and they make it super simple. Before I tried to, just an example, a year, c- couple years ago for Christmas, I tried to give my email list uh, a, a Christmas-themed book I had written, and I just put a link to it and into um, Dropbox. I think it shared it and then said, you know, just download it and put it on your stuff. Oh my goodness, so many people could not figure out how to do it, and I spent so much time trying to walk people through how to get the book. It was a nightmare. And this takes that out of it. A book funnel, if someone's having trouble, they ask book funnel how to do it. And then book funnel helps them with their problem. Wow, that's that's a fantastic service. It is a fantastic service and so reasonably priced. So I recommend anyone, and you can be, and it wouldn't even just have to be a book. I, it looked like you could put you know PDFs and things up there too. So if you were giving someone a worksheet or you know I know different businesses give out different things I still think it's a valid way to get it into the hands of your subscribers nice and we'll definitely put the link to book funnel in the show notes so you guys can check it out for yourself moving on we have book promo sites an example um like the best known example I know of is bookbub have you heard of bookbub Chris I have not you have not. Okay, so it might be more of a fiction thing, but um, BookBub is the granddaddy of them. The idea is that you get on there, you have to apply and pay to do it, and it can be quite expensive, but they have a massive email list that goes out to all kinds of readers, and they are telling people about books that are on sale, usually for 99 cents or free. And I have heard that people are made off of bookbub sometimes if they can get their their books onto there and there are other smaller sites like bookbub that have easier criteria for getting in and are less expensive for getting in but the idea is that your book is on special and it gets broadcast out to you know up to thousands of people depending on the the site that you're using And I will be honest, BookBub is something I want to do. I'm hoping I can do BookBub when my second book in the series comes out because you have to have a certain amount of reviews and different things. So you have to be strategic with it. But that is kind of like my my dream thing right now. I used a site with my first book called Buck Books when they had first come out. 
and I had it on sale or maybe I was giving it away I can't remember it's been a couple years now but I gave away thousands of my book it was amazing how many I gave away and over time just because people download your book today doesn't mean they're going to read it today they may find it a year from now in their Kindle and go oh yeah I forgot I had that um, but over time, that resulted in a lot more reviews for my book, which of course Amazon likes and helps you with the algorithms and all of those things. So um, I don't know how it works if there's as many opportunities for this for nonfiction, but definitely if you're writing fiction, you should be looking out for these kinds of sites. You do need to be careful. There can be some pretty scammy ones. Um, so you don't want to end up being with one of those because that can get you in trouble as well. But if you do your research, you can find some that are that are worth using and um, maybe just, you know, look for reviews on them and ask around on social media to see what other people know about them. If nobody knows about them, then it might not be a great idea. But <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely find out there's some hidden gems, you know, out there. And if you book, book books had just started when I first did mine, so they were really new back then. So anyway, that can be pretty helpful as well in the in the fiction side. And was Buck Books an expensive start or was it reasonable? It was free. as If I recall, it's free. I don't know if it still is or not, but at the time it was free. And that so that was perfect for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like you said, uh, it led to the Amazon reviews, which is really like the holy grail of being on Amazon is that you want to get those reviews because then those reviews start to boost your rating up and get you higher up in the rankings. Definitely. Definitely. And not everyone who reads your book is going to leave a review. So back to that kind of compound effect of you need more people reading your books so that you have more, um, uh, the odds are you will get more reviews. Right on. Right. So then we come to blogging on your site and others. So for me, I have kind of mixed feelings about this, and it could be because I'm in the fiction world. It, um, it's hard to think about what, what people want to read about. I've been blogging all, um, fairly steadily for several years now and, you know, trying to build a platform there. But I've watched the traffic to my site, and I just don't get that much traffic when I just blog about writing or if I blog about um, what's going on in my life. You know, I've had a couple that did well that really corresponded with one of my books, but they just have been kind of few and far between. So I've kind of dropped back on doing it. I found that if people really want to know what's going on with me and my books, they are on my email list. And that's where I'm connecting with those folks. But I'm guessing for nonfiction, it's probably a much more important thing to do. Yeah. Uh, blogging on your own site, especially if you've got a book, is a great way to get people, I guess, introduced to your book. So what I did with my book um, is because I am nonfiction and my book is written in such a way that you can dissect it and just kind of read it chapter by chapter. You don't have to read it in any sort of order is that I can take, and, and I've done it with a couple of chapters that I thought were more interesting uh, for a blog audience, is I've stripped those entire chapters out of my book and used them as blog posts. And so shared those as entire posts, and I've just updated them or I've added more information to them or I put links in them. But uh, sharing it that way is a great way to provide more content, more information, and it, it introduce, introduces people to your book without them actually having to read your book. So then you can you know, send them back to the book and you can either say it's an excerpt from the book or you can, you know, at the end of the, the post, you can you know, recommend that people learn more about this topic by checking out your book. So for a nonfiction writer, yeah, I think blogging on your site is something that you consistently should do well. And, and um, something I've seen blogs take a form of is an email. So back up to the email thing, I'm seeing a lot more people kind of blogging in email if that makes sense, where uh, people who are in the nonfiction space who have books or have products will send out emails that sound like entire stories. So that's another vehicle to think about, too, is being able to take blog content and then repurpose it into email, uh, not making it super long. I think 350 words is really the sweet spot for that. Mm hmm. So that's what I've seen. Uh, as far as blogging on the site of other people, I think that's been gone for a little while now. We're the, kind of the guest posting uh, on someone else's site. I think more people are going to places like Medium 
and being able to create medium accounts and then linking that medium account back to their content or going even to LinkedIn publisher and sharing their content on LinkedIn and then sourcing it back to their blog. So those are two viable options that I use and I would recommend anybody else use. Just repurpose your content on other open forum sites like a log, like a LinkedIn or like a medium. Yeah, cool. I knew that it kind of varied between fiction and nonfiction. They were kind of two different things there sometimes. So now we're heading into one of my favorite topics, which is live events. Um, I know Chris and I have talked about in depth before about how we're both extroverts. So I get excited about having live events and I usually average mm, probably at least two or three a year in various capacities. They, these are an opportunity for you to market yourself in person. This is an opportunity to, for people to fall in love with you. And when people like you, they are way more likely to support your work and buy your books and you know spread the word about what you do. So over the years, I've just discovered that I love doing them and they can range in anything from having a reading at a bookstore or a library or giving presentations where you talk about your writing process or some people will, um, if they have a really interesting topic within their book, they'll give a whole presentation on that topic. There's lots of different ways that a live event can shape up. Yeah, and, and also you can add public speaking to a live event. You know, if you're part of uh, a yeah. group that's speaking or if you've been invited to speak somewhere, that, that consi that's considered a live event. Make sure that you bring your books, you know, you bring your pen or your whatever you're going to sign it with and, and make a day out of it. Uh, it's an opportunity to meet people that may not have had contact with your book or may not know you. And it's like you said, uh, it gives people a chance to get to know your personality and like you. And, and when people like you, they tend to want to buy from you. Definitely. And I feel like in our society right now, everything is so electronic driven that you don't get very many opportunities to be face to face with people. And so I think that when you make these connections at live events, they have an even bigger impact than you might realize because it's just these connections aren't as common as they used to be. No, they're not. But in the advent of t now that we have this technology, Facebook Live is a great way to create your own live events on the spot when you feel like creating a live event. I've got a friend uh, who just released a book, and so every Thursday she has an author chat to talk about her book, which is about art. So she has artists come on and just talk about, hey, let me answer your art questions. Have you read the book? Let me answer anything you got to know about the book or anything you want to learn about me or my life or any ways that I can help you. So she has this author chat every Thursday based on her book. So I think that's a really cool way to do a live event on your own terms. Nice. Yeah, that's great. People are so creative. They are, and technology allows you to be that creative, as creative as you want to be. And then another live event is book signing. I know mm -hmm. you've done book signings, but being able to do these book signings, you have the, the thing is you have to have a print book for one. You know, having an ebook isn't going to work right. for book signing. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to make sure that you I have. Bring their Kindles. <laughs> <laughs> to sign with your sharpie. Sticky notes. I just I, that or I'll sign a sticky note and stick it to their Kindle. It's it's funny. They just come to see me, but they're like, I but I already I only e read ebooks. Oh man, that's great. That's great. But yeah, you have to have a print book and you have to get the full ISBN from Amazon. So Amazon has a couple of ISBNs. They have a free one, which typically goes with ebooks. Then you've got like a lower level, like a ten or a fifteen dollar one, and then you've got the big one, which is ninety nine dollars. And I definitely recommend if you want to do book signings in large chain bookstores like Barnes and Noble which seems to be everyone's standard of bookstores for book signings that you get the the $99 ISBN because that's going to make sure that you you have the proper distributor agreements that are going to allow you to be able to walk into the bookstore talk to the general manager and have him order books directly from the distributor so that you can have your book signings and, and they'll be happy to book you once they know that you've got that situated right and there's also options it doesn't work that way i mean for uh, those that requirement isn't there for every single bookstore pretty much just the big guys but i've had signings in smaller bookstores where they just asked me to bring my books and then we sold them on consignment so they would maybe put their barcode on it and check it out and then i would um, get a certain percentage from the sale and then any the other places um, like the library, for example, I just bring my books 
and I just sell them myself and you don't need any special ISBNs for that just whatever came from Amazon that I mean I haven't paid for an ISBN yet and I but I just haven't required it at this point in time so it kind of depends on where and how you're going about your book signing yeah and the thing about a book signing is take it seriously take it ultra seriously like you know be the yeah. celebrity for the day. Dress the part. Mm -hmm. Bring lots of copies of your book. Um, if you can, if you can find a way to create a book marker to go with your book that falls in line with the artwork or the theme of the book, do that. It just heightens your professional image. Have some have some business cards, perhaps. Collect email addresses. Again, everything goes back to having that list. You know, for people who come visit you, just ask, hey, I'd love to be able to keep you in the loop. Would you like to join my email list? And then yep. get a meter board. And what a meter board is, it's one of those standing boards. It's about six feet tall. It's like a, a, it's a display. If you can get some professional photography of yourself or your artwork, put that on there and then put it on the perimeters of your table. They don't cost a lot of money. You can probably get them you know, under 100 bucks, but totally they look amazing. I, I watched an author do that uh, at my book festival last year. Just put them up looked phenomenal and people flocked to his table because he looked so much more professional than the people who didn't have you know artwork out and have a and, and who didn't have a really truly great display so take the time to do it right get some you know when people come to your table sign their books be pleasant and make sure that you, you know take lots of great photos post things on social media tag people have people tag you back uh, just social proof is social capital and that's something that looks really good when you're trying to you know work your way up the book ranks Definitely. And you know, that display that you're talking about, you know, there might be people that are coming into the store or the location where you're set up without specifically coming for that purpose of seeing you or buying your book, but it will draw their attention and draw them in. And so you might get some extra attention that way by um, having your presence so well marked. Yeah, absolutely. And another, well, form of live events, you can have them be digital or live, is the book release party. And this is where um, you could do it on Facebook or you could do it live. Have you had a, a book release party yet, Chris? Oh, have I? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't invited. <laughs> Dude, people love an excuse to party. I'm one of those people, and I really had a good time at my book release party. So I created a Facebook event, and I just invited you know 90 people in my immediate area who I was friends with on Facebook, who were acquainted with me or in some way were interested in my book. And I sent it out, and I think I had like 50 or 50 or 55 people return that and they showed up and I, we just had a blast I, I catered it had food there had music uh, I signed books I took pictures I collected email address so now these people are on my list forever and ever and you know I spoke and it was just a really really good time and people just love it because people love writers I don't know what it is but when someone meets an author it's a lot different than anybody else they meet because there's something about your oh I know an author that sounds so much different than hey you know I know a designer or hey you know I know an editor but when someone is an author people like I don't know there's a stigma that people just get excited about that so people wanted to flock I've around and hang out and we, too. <laughs> and we and yeah <laughs> and so it was just a really good time so I'm a big advocate of hey anytime you release a book have a party with it give away swag I had some really really cool um, door prizes that I gave away that were very um, book and productivity theme because my book has a lot to do with productivity as a writer so there are book and productivity themes these really nice um hardbound journals and coffee mugs that were like really really cool that um changed color with temperature <laughs> so just a lot of really oh fun gosh. stuff yeah i'm so totally it was, coming to your next party <laughs> yeah you gotta be there so a lot a lot of fun things you can do at the book party but if you have a if you're a fiction author and you've got some sort of theme, you know, you got some sort of character, theme out your party, make it a date, make it fun, make it exciting, make it like an amusement park. Definitely. I haven't had a full on live release party, but I'm about to. Yeah, see, so for your next book, you can have like real live football players there, maybe. And tackle I might, people. You know, I, and, oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I live in a university town, so I might be able to get some football players down there. That would be pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I'm actually pairing up um, with a local coffee shop, cafe, bar kind of a place. They have a full-service bar. They serve regular food. 
and yeah we're theming it out and got a whole plan for it for some time this spring so we're I'm pretty excited about it, it it's it's gonna be awesome I'm you know when, when they say we're gonna have a signature cocktail for the evening I'm like yeah I'm in <laughs> <laughs> can you name it after so, yeah. a character in my book you know <laughs> yeah really <laughs> that would be great <laughs> just have the whole menu themed that night Yep, they, they are going to make a themed menu for the evening, and um, yeah, it's going to be ex- really exciting. I cannot wait, and I'll be sure that when I get a date, we'll announce it on here too, just in case any of you are local. Oh, yeah, dude, I, I get excited. I get so excited when I talk about book parties. <laughs> well, you know, and I have to, this will be just a little random tidbit about me, but I love the show Sex in the City. And in the first season, there is a book launch party for a fiction author that is friends with the main character, Carrie. And I have just always dreamed of having that party. And I think I'm going to have the Pullman version of it. <laughs> do it. Do it. <laughs> it's kind of a dream awesome. come true. But if yeah. you're not a party animal like me and Chris, you could do something a little bit tamer. You could have a Facebook launch party. And I've actually done this with other authors and they will invite people who I mean invite all kinds of Facebook people but it won't be just them they'll invite guests to the party that will also um, like they may write similar books and so everybody's there to mostly celebrate the release of the main authors party but other authors will be there too with similar books and people have opportunity to win books at the party Um, you know they can win hard or physical copies or e-copies and they just play fun little games online and it's easy because people don't have to be there at a certain time you know it'll just be open and people can pop in and out and be part of the discussion as it goes along and and that's another way to do it if you're not up to doing the big in real life party yeah no totally i've never done an e-party i might have to try something like that one time yeah, they're fun. They're fun. Well, I've never done a nonfiction one, but the fiction ones are pretty fun. So now we're moving into some of my favorite things to promote, which is mm-hmm. media. I love promoting with media. And one of the top ways to promote are podcasts. Um, podcasts will introduce you and connect you with so many new readers. And the best part about podcasts is it's talk. So you really get to talk yourself up. You get to be the expert. You're the guy on the hot seat that day who gets to really promote and blow your own horn. And it's not even called selfish at that point. You know what I mean? So, (laughs) you know, with podcasts exploding in popularity in recent years, uh, you can jump on really easily. After I finished my book last year, I went on several shows. And I just talked about my book. And the hosts were so good. They asked such really good questions. And so it it gave me a chance to engage. It gave me a chance to talk about how I wrote my book, why I wrote my book, who I wrote it for, what do I want to do with my book. I get a chance to talk about topics within my book, my expertise and how I came up with the concepts in my book. So it gave people a really deep snapshot of who I was and why I am an expert at what I do. And so I think that helps with confidence in the buyer because then the buyer can say, wow, okay, this guy does know what he's talking about. He's written the book on it. It seems really interesting. Maybe I need to get my hands on it. And so it also gives the reader a chance to get to know you beyond just the bio and the book jacket. Because I think that sometimes, you know, when we have to buy in the book jacket, we're limited with the character count. We don't have a lot of space to write about ourselves. So we have to really make that go fast. So uh, going on podcasts also is a great credibility indicator. So and what that means is that you can take the, the download, the downloadable MP3 from the host. Just once you finish the show, contact the host and say, hey, I had a great time. When you upload the show, can I have a copy of the show from my website? And then you've got that as part of your press kit so that when you're going up the ranks of public speaking or whatever the case may be, you've got all these audio files stored on your website or accessible to you that you can email to people and say, hey, I've done shows before. I'd love to go on your show. Take a look at this show and listen to this show that I've done in the past. So it's a great credibility indicator for you to sound extra professional and like the expert in your field and then um, there's a great service I know a lot of people may say well how do I get started with podcasts what do I do to get on a podcast I don't know the first thing about PR there's a great service called interviews on demand the girl's name is Julia Jackson she's super cool I met with her a couple of days ago because I heard about her program and what she does to get people interviews on podcasts she does all the work for you you just tell her hey Julia I want to go on this podcast or that podcast or she'll have some already pre-designated and say what do you think about this so it's a great way for you to get someone to do 
do all that legwork for you without even doing it. Her prices are reasonable, and she guarantees you at least four shows every single month, month, which is a really great deal. Wow, that's a great service. I might have to look her up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you done any podcasts before? Apart from, you know, the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I haven't done a ton of them. I think other than, like, what we're doing now... Um, I've done two, and it was one was still yours. <laughs> a couple of years ago, you had me on as a guest right about the time I think I was putting out my second novel. And then I was on another friend's podcast. I think it was with my first one, and they were a blast. I love doing them because, well, I like to talk. And so I um, – anyway, yeah, I love doing them, and I would really like to do more. So I, I probably need to look into – somebody like Julia helping me get some things set up. If you're looking to position yourself or share about your book, definitely look her up. So the other thing that's in that same vein, which is kind of the grandfather of podcasts, are radio shows. (laughs) 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 But um, radio shows are great because those are live broadcasts, which which is really fun because then you get to really be in the moment. And you get a broadcast on air, and you get the potential for people to call in and ask you questions, which is a lot of fun. I did a couple of radio shows last year, too. I just contacted some show producers that I knew and said, hey, look, I've just finished writing a book. You know, How would you like it if I addressed your audience about this topic or that topic or some other topic that you think within my book fits within your, the genre of your show format? And so they came back and were like, yeah, sure thing. Come in on this day. And so I would come in, and it's really fun to be in studio. It just feels super official. To be in studio, to have your little headset on, to talk into the, the microphone, and, and interact with a, a show host. So I definitely think if you can do that, totally take advantage of that with some local radio. You can also do it via the phone, or you can do internet radio. There's lots of internet radio sites out there that you can jump on and ask show hosts for opportunities. So one etiquette tip is if you do decide that you want to go live and you get a call back or you get an email back that the host wants you to come on live, bring the host a signed copy of the book. It's just a great thank you because they're taking the time to add you to their show. So give them a signed copy of the book and then take photos together, tag each other up and just find ways to maximize on that exposure in every way you can. So you've got the audio portion, you've got the social media portion and you've got them working together. That sounds like a blast. I would absolutely love to do that someday. Yeah, radio is fun. It is a lot of fun. I'm I'm not surprised. I mean, doing this is super fun, and this is sort of like doing radio. So, although, I don't know, we have some pretty good blooper reels, and radio's live, so. (laughs) (laughs) That That we do, that we do. (laughs) (laughs) I'll I'll have to, uh, we'll have to release an unedited version one day just for fun. Oh my gosh, it would be to be explicit. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So the next the next way to market your book is through library donation. This is like ultra grassroots, low hanging fruit. Every community has got a library. And so what you need to do is contact your reference librarian and then ask them about how do I go about donating a book? They typically have you come in, sign a form, they'll take a picture and then they'll put it in the local paper, which is really cool because now you've got a picture of yourself in print in your local paper that you can share all over the place, keep as part of your press kit. And I know I've talked about press kits a couple of times. We'll probably do a show just about what needs to go into a writer's press kit. But yeah, it gives you more credibility so that when you want to do those speaking engagements, those seminars, you can pop that out and say, yeah, my book's in the library. Here's a photo. I've got it on radio. I've been on podcasts. So it just, it keeps giving these um, credibility indicators that show that you are who you, you know, that you're worth your salt, that you're someone that people may want to hire to speak or do seminars one day. That's, that's really what it's all about when you're promoting and marketing is that you want to get to that place where people desire to have you speak or do things beyond your book so that your book really takes on a life of its own for the reader, but it also takes on a life of its own in creating you, your persona as an author. Yeah. Yeah, and I've done this with my local library, too, and it actually spurred into being invited to come do some live events there, which was really exciting. They really love to support their local authors, and so when I brought a book down and said, hi, would you like to have this on the shelf? And they're like, yeah, sure, and hi, would you like to come speak? (laughs) So it turned out to be a great partnership, and then um, there's also people that 
either aren't big book buyers for whatever reason, whether it's money or space, or, you know, they would rather try a new author by checking them out from the library first, I can say, oh, yeah, I totally get that. So if you go down to Neil Public, you can grab a copy of my book and check it out. And it just gives your work more exposure. Yes, definitely. Now, the next thing <laughs> is give it away. And I know, I know it's very counterintuitive. People are like, well, I spent all this time writing this book, and I've priced it at eleven ninety nine, or I've priced it on Kindle at four ninety nine, and now you want me just to give my book away? Well, Kayla, there was a song around nineteen ninety by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and it was oh, called "Give It Away." Love that song. <laughs> <laughs> give it away, give it away, give it away. Now that's right. Yeah, it's okay to give things away. That's how you get things in people's hands. You know, and I love that song too. It, it's still on my playlist. But order extra books, sign them, give them away. Send copies to book bloggers. If you can locate book bloggers, and that's, that's research that you do as you write your book. While you're writing your book, you're still doing this marketing research so that you have it ready to go when your book is released. But find book bloggers who fit your genre or find book editors who review books within your genre or meet with people who are influencers who can help you book speaking engagements down the road to talk about whatever your expertise is. But give copies to those people, people who have influence, people who have status, who can help you promote your book. It is A-OK -okay to give those bad boys away. And then when you go to speaking events, be sure to contest them out. You know, And again, using the email list thing, hey, sign up for my email list and I'll add you uh, as a person who gets in the gets to be a part of this raffle for a free book at the end of the seminar or the end of the speaking engagement and you have a few lucky winners but again you're collecting email addresses you're giving away books in exchange for those email addresses or an opportunity to win a book in exchange for that email addresses but now you've got a warm list for just a few copies of the book definitely giveaways are awesome i sometimes will have little contests on my facebook page just I random little you know tell me about this and you'll be entered in to win a book and sometimes it's an ebook sometimes it's a physical book it kind of just depends on the day and my mood and I've also um, I mentioned earlier the author parties that I've been a part of on Facebook people will win copies of my books there as well and another thing I discovered is a great way to give away your books is to watch for local fundraising events. For example, my daughter's school has a big spaghetti feed to raise money for fifth grade camp. And at that spaghetti feed, there's a silent auction. And so they are always looking for donations from the community to make these big gift baskets. So this year I put some of my books in the gift baskets. And I've done that at other, um, businesses around town and so it gets my name out there it helps the the business raise money and or the, the the project to raise money and it's a great way to help you both out and there's also the great amazon giveaway or you know having some free days for your ebooks have you done that at all chris I've done the giveaway, and it, uh, it's worked a little for me, but I didn't put the time into it uh, that I probably should have. But I know that you've done a really good job with that. Can you talk a little more about it? Yes. So I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier when I talked about doing the, the Buck Books things, and you don't have to be part of a, a, you know, a book promotion service to do this. You could just do this on your own. But you can price your book for free for so many days. If you're in Amazon um, Select, you can you can have so many free days for a book every 90-day cycle. And if you promote that, that's a great time to use a Facebook ad and really promote that your book is free. You can give away hundreds of copies, if not more. I mean, I've had hun it do hundreds. Some people do thousands. But it gets your book into people's hands. And like I said, they may not read it right away, but down the road they might. And then they leave a review and you gradually grow reviews. They also, if you're putting um, information for people to sign up for your newsletter in the front matter and the back matter of your book, then they may join your mailing list after reading your book. And so it's a great way to just bring them into your world. Um, and then leave more reviews and as 
the more that they download during that period, it launches you up the Amazon free charts, which then puts your book in front of more people. And it's that whole cycle I keep mes mentioning of the Amazon algorithms. But having some free days is definitely a great move, I think, for helping promote your book. Oh, yeah. No, any way that you can get books into the right hands, you, you, you right. have to be willing to do that. You have to be willing to take whatever you know risk that is. All right, and lastly is contributing to publications. This is definitely uh, a nonfiction thing. I'm not sure that many uh, fiction authors can take advantage of this. They may be able to with anthologies, but for the nonfiction writer, being able to look at your book and decide how newsworthy is my content. Can I, can I write expert pieces, either in my local paper, local magazine, regional magazines, uh, news publications online or other blogs, or even go on radio shows uh, based on specific topics? So let's say hypothetically you wrote a book about a topic circulating in the mainstream. Maybe you wrote a political book. Maybe you wrote an environmental book or a book on economics. Anything, that, Any of those mainstream hot button topics that are always kind of incubating and swirling out and you see them trending on Facebook. If you've written anything about that, contact somebody in your news community and say, hey, look, I recently wrote a book on how to balance a budget and they're, they're talking about cutting spending on X, Y, and Z. That's one of my fortes. I understand that part of economics. I'd love to write a piece about it or I'd love to be interviewed as an expert to talk about you know, how important that is on a national and a local level. So looking for ways to tie your book into mainstream media is a great way to get you exposure as well. Uh, as an expert and then people invariably are going to want to look at your book or buy your book or consider what you have so finding ways to tie in is a great way to go um, I'm a radio host also and so one thing I love is when I can find a guest who can do that I'm always looking to bridge gaps so if I hear about a trending topic I'm always got my I'm always got my wheels turning I'm always thinking who can I find who's available who are the experts out there so be that person learn to understand the newsworthiness of your book and tie it together with something that's trending that sounds awesome I could see where that could be very useful yeah yeah I mean apart from just maybe anthologies is there any way that that tip can work in the fiction sphere you think well, I was mulling it over as you went along, and, you know, I think, obviously I haven't done it, but I think there's a way to do anything, and if you are covering, um, if your book has a sensitive topic, or, uh, like you say, a, a top-of-mind topic, even though it's fiction, it can still address an issue, so you might be able to kind of, you know, put it out there and, and align it with some topics that are going on. It would take some thinking, but I totally think it would be possible. Yeah, these are, these are just some of the ways that you can really take a leap. Um, they're very grassroots. These topics that we talked about with you guys today are very grassroots, very easy to start, easy to do, very low cost. I mean, in some cases, a lot of the stuff that we talked about were free things you can do and get moving right now. So did you have any additional thoughts, Kayla, that you wanted to share with our audience before we come in for a landing and sign off? No, I just hope that those of you listening will take a chance and give one or two of these things a try, and we'd love to hear about it. Absolutely. So be sure to check out the show notes from this week. All the links for the tools that we mentioned will be in the show notes, uh, along with a recap of the show. And if you'd like to talk to me directly about the nonfiction sphere and how that works and how to promote as a nonfiction author, you can find me at chris at readywritelaunch.com, right on the website too, through the contact form. I'm on Twitter at Chris Jones Inc. And Kayla, how can they find you to talk to you about how to market as a fiction author? They can find me at my website at KaylaDonThomas.com, and I'm also on Twitter at KaylaDonWrites. All right, so happy marketing. I hope you guys are excited. would love to hear what you're about to implement, what you're going to start, and how it works for you. So until next time, write well. Mm -hmm.